Hey folks, this is Red Falcon, and in this video I'm going to show you one of my favorite plugins for Firefox, NoScript. So let's start off with this uh, site that we've been picking on, CafeMom.com. And uh, if you watched my previous video, then you saw the uh, what uh, uBlock Origin can do as far as blocking ads. Well, the plugin I'm going to show you is called NoScript, and it's basically uBlock Origin on hard mode. So to install it, we go to add-ons. By the way, I already um, took off um, uBlock Origin so you can see what this looks like by itself. And you can type in no script, all one word. And you want the no script security suite. If you want more information, um, there's a developer right there. And we're going to go back one and install it. Now it does require you to reboot your browser, so you just click here to restart. And it should pop back up in a second. All right, and it's back. So whenever uh, there's a new update, um, you'll be taken to this NoScript page. It basically has uh, all the information about what the new update did, what it is. If you'd like to donate, there's a donate button right there. I highly recommend it. Um, I've been using this plugin for well over 10 years. Uh, it's only available for Firefox and other Mozilla browsers, so like SeaMonkey, uh, Ice Weasel, and a few other ones. Um, but I think it's well worth it. So let me go ahead and close this. So you'll immediately notice this little add-on here. Uh, this is how you control NoScript. So unlike uBlock Origin, which just blocks ads, no script blocks anything that's a script. And a script's basically just a, a set of instructions that runs uh, in the browser, ads, video, I mean, you name it, any type of plugin is usually going to be run as a script. Um, but that also protects you from any type of malware that's also running in a script. However, it can be a little cumbersome because instead of just blocking the ads, now this blocks everything on a site that's a script, so it could potentially break a script. It's less of an issue now that uh, more websites are using HTML5, but uh, prior to that it was a huge inconvenience. Um, but actually it's still an inconvenience because now um, you'll actually get to see all the different domains and third-party sites that are plugged into a site. So I'm using Cafe Mom here as an example just to show you just how many different domains are plugged into this site. So first thing you want to do, now you can actually allow all scripts globally, which essentially disables it. I don't recommend that. Usually what I do is temporarily allow all on this page. Um, you can also allow all on this page, which basically adds it to a whitelist. And at any time you can go back in and uh, forbid a site. So what we want to do is first we want to just temporarily allow Cafe Mom. And every time you allow something on no script, you have to refresh the page. Okay, so this is the first party domain allowed. But if you look down here, we've got um, all these different domains plugged in. Chartbeat, the plugin for Facebook is here. Um, I don't even know what half these things are. Google Analytics, I know what that one is. But it, let's say you allow one of these. Let's do Cafe Mom Static just to see what, what's available. And just look at all these sites. I just allowed one additional um, third-party source, and now I'm getting all these other ones. I mean, it's ridiculous how many... Um, things or it allows but you know if you're wondering what you're looking at each one of these entries is a different domain or a different website plugin um, for this site so normally if you didn't have no script when you load this page it would load every single one of these different domains which if you're a low bandwidth um, if you have a data cap on your um, provider, your ISP, so say you're using satellite internet and you're only allowed a certain number of uh, gigs per month, this certainly cuts into it. 
Um, I usually have no script running on uh, Firefox, and I have Firefox as my default site. So if I ever click on any links, which you shouldn't do, but if you do click on any links in like email or anything, um, it'll bring this up and it'll automatically block anything that's running on that site. For comparison, I want to show you a site that has next to no third-party content. I'm going to go to the Gibson Research Corporation, or grc.com. And if you look here, you just have grc.com. And I'm actually going to allow it because um, grc is a uh, um, site I go to frequently. But look, grc.com has no third-party content, at least on this page, that I can tell. So, and if we actually forbid this, okay, um, at one point, sometimes these, uh, these drop down menus will break if you don't allow the script, but it looks like he's using some type of HTML5, so that's not an issue. But anyway, um, that's um, no script. I really like no script, but you know, it's it's a lot more advanced than uBlock Origin. uBlock Origin, you pretty much just set it and forget it. While this, it requires you to kind of understand what all these different sites are and what they do. Um, and it can be a lot, it's a lot more cumbersome than uBlock. So um, anyway, but I really like it. Um, download it on Firefox, test it out. Let me know what you think. Um, it's been around forever. So it's, uh, you know, it's one of my favorites. But uh I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any uh, questions or uh, suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, be safe out there.